Hello, my name is Miss Barbara. I'm one of the librarians at the Riverhead Free Library in the Youth and Family Services Department. And I'm here because November is Native American Heritage Month. So we're going to do a special story time in honor of that celebration. And we're gonna read some stories and we're gonna learn how to make a dream catcher. So if you have registered for this program, um, you're going to be able to come to the library and get a kit. You're going to get a kit that has all the ingredients that uh, and supplies to make the dream catcher with also the directions. So let's start with some stories. The first story is called How Chipmunk Got His Stripes. And it's by one of my favorite authors, um, Joseph Bruchak, who is a really fantastic uh, Native American author of children's and adult books as well. He's written a lot of books, so if you're looking for some really good Native American books to read, Joseph Bruchak, Bruchak is a very good author to check out. And um, the pictures are by Jose Arrego and Diane uh, Ariadna Dewey. And this is a traditional tale. One autumn day, long ago, Bear was out walking. As he walked, he began to brag. I am Bear. I am the biggest of all the animals. Yes, I am. I am Bear. I am the strongest of all the animals. Yes, I am. I am Bear. I am the loudest of all the animals. Yes, I am. I am Bear. I am Bear. I can do anything. Yes, I can. As soon as Bear said those words, a little voice spoke up from the ground. Can you really do anything? Bear looked down and he saw a little brown squirrel standing on his hind legs. Can you really do anything? Brown squirrel asked again. Bear stood up very tall. And he said, I am Bear. I can do anything. Yes, I can. Can you tell the sun not to rise tomorrow morning? Brown Squirrel asked. I have never tried that before, but I am Bear and I can do anything. Yes, I can. See the little squirrel? He's so tiny. Bear so big. Squirrel so tiny. Bear turned west to face the sun. It was the time when the sun always goes down. Bear stood up his full height and spoke in a loud voice. Sun, do not come up tomorrow. At his words, the sun began to disappear behind the hills. You see, Bear said, sun is afraid of me. He is running away. But will the sun come up tomorrow? Brown Squirrel asked. No, Bear answered, the sun will not come up. What do you think is going to happen? Do you think the sun's going to come up? Do you think Bear is that powerful? Let's see. Hmm. Then Bear turned to face east, the direction where the sun always used to come up. He sat down and little brown squirrel sat down beside him. See, there he is. All that night, they did not sleep. All that night, Bear kept saying these words, the sun will not come up tomorrow. <laughs> the sun will not come up tomorrow. <laughs> but as the night went on, little brown squirrel began to say something too. He said these words, the sun is going to rise. Ooh, the sun is going to rise. So I wonder who the sun's gonna listen to. Is the sun gonna listen to Bear? Or is the sun gonna listen to Little Squirrel? Let's see. Look at all the animals. See all the animals? Look at that. Look at that. 
all through the night. There they sat, one by one, and other animals gathered around them. Fox and wolf, deer and moose, rabbit and porcupine, hawk and owl, otter and beaver, frog and turtle, and even the little tiny mice came. They wanted to see who would be right, bear or brown squirrel. This is what the other animals heard. The sun will not come up. <laughs> the sun is going to rise. Ooh. The sun will not come up. <laughs> the sun is going to rise. Ooh. And that's what bear and squirrel kept saying. Finally, it was just before dawn, the time when the sun always used to come up. Look, said Turtle, a little bit of red is starting to show. Yes, said Owl, I believe the sun will rise today. Bear only chanted louder, the sun will not come up. <clears throat> but right next to him, little brown squirrel piped up, the sun is going to rise. Everybody's looking, right? They all want to see what's going to happen. Well, look, does it look dark or light in the picture? Looks kind of light to me. <gasps> because the sun came up. The birds sang their welcoming song. The bright light of the new day spread over the land. Everyone was happy except for one animal. Who do you think that one animal is who was not happy? I think I know. Do you know? Yeah. That animal was bear. He sat there with his head down and a grumpy look on his face. He's not happy. Oh, look at him. He's really not happy. Look at little squirrel. Oh, the happiest animal of all was, who do you think? That's right, little brown squirrel was very, very happy. The sun came up, he chirped. The sun came up, the sun came up, the sun came up. Brown Squirrel was so happy he forgot what his wise old grandmother had told him when he was very young. Brown Squirrel, his grandmother had said, it is good to be right about something, but when someone else is wrong, it is not good to tease them. Now little brown squirrel began to tease Bear. Bear is foolish, the sun came up. Bear is silly, the sun came up. Bear is stupid, the sun came up. Do you think that's very nice of him to do? He should remember what his grandmother said. I don't think it's nice to tease like that. Plus, it's not very smart to tease a big, mean bear. Let's see what happened. <gasps> Womp! Bear's big paw came down on little brown squirrel, pinning him to the ground. Bear leaned over, opened up his huge mouth. Yes, Bear growled. The sun did come up. Yes, I do look foolish, but you will not live to see another sunrise. You will not ever tease anyone again because I and Bear am going to eat you. Brown squirrel thought fast. You are right to eat me, he said and I was wrong to tease you. I would like to say I'm sorry before you eat me, but you are pressing me down so hard that I cannot say anything. I cannot say I'm sorry. I cannot even breathe. If you would lift up your paw just a little bit, then I could take a deep breath and apologize before you eat me. That is a good idea, Bear said. I would like to hear you apologize before I eat you. He's pretty tricky, that squirrel. Let's see what's gonna happen. So Bear lifted up his paw, and what do you think happened? Instead of apologizing, Brown Squirrel ran! He ran as fast as he could toward the pile of stones where he had his home. He had a tunnel under those stones and a nice warm burrow deep underground. Little Brown Squirrel's grandmother stood there in the door waiting for him. Hurry, Brown Squirrel, she said. Hurry, hurry. There she is. You see, he's running. He's running, 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 running. Do you think he'll make it to the burrow? He's going to make it? Uh-oh. Look. What do you think happened? Look at that. 
little brown squirrel dove for the door to his home. But Bear was faster than he looked. He grabbed for little brown squirrel and with his big paw, Bear's long sharp claws scratched brown squirrel's back from the top of his head to the tip of his tail. See, he scratched him with his big claws. But brown squirrel got away. Deep down in his burrow, where Bear couldn't get him, brown squirrel curled up next to his grandmother and slept all winter while those scratches on his back healed. There he is with, and look, who's peeking in? Whose eye do you think that is? It's Bear's looking in there, but he can't get in, he's too big. And there's little brown squirrel with his grandma. When spring came again, little brown squirrel came out of his hole and looked at himself. There were long pale stripes all the way down his back where Bear had scratched him. He was brown squirrel no longer. He was now Chipmunk, the striped one. He's not a squirrel anymore, he's a chipmunk. And that is how Chipmunk got his stripes. Since then, Chipmunk has been the very first animal to get up every morning. As the sun rises, he scoots to the top of the tallest tree to sing his song. The sun came up, the sun came up, ooh, the sun came up. Can you see him? Where is he? Do you see the little squirrel who's now a chipmunk? Where is he? Can you find him? And ever since then, Bear has been the last animal to get up. And he doesn't like to hear Chipmunk's song. It reminds him, as it reminds us all, that no one, not even Bear, can do everything. Nobody can do everything, not even Bear. The end. Did you like that story? I really like that story. That was a good one. And remember, it's not nice to tease. If someone else is wrong and you're right, it's not a good idea to tease them. Remember, that's what Grandma told the little brown squirrel who became the brown chipmunk. Now, I have a couple other stories here. Dream Catcher and Grandmother's Dream Catcher. These are books you can get at the library. I'm not going to read both of them, but I am going to show you the Dream Catcher story because that's what we're going to make. And this is by Audrey Asofsky, illustrated by Ed Young. Beautiful illustrations, right? It says, In the moon of the raspberries in a time long ago, a baby sleeps dreaming, dreaming on a cradle board wrapped in doe skin, soft and snug. A baby sleeps smiling baby sleeping lullaby lullaby sigh the tail pines as mother picks berries with baby on her back see she's picking berries and babies can you see it babies on the back sleep baby sleep whispers spirit of the woods as big sister weaves a dream hoop on little a dream net on a little willow hoop a dream net for baby like a small spider web spun of nettle stalk twine stained dark red with the bark of the wild plum and can you see it that's it In the land of the Ojibwe, in a village by the wood, children play the blindfold game calling, try to catch me. See them? Baby wakes and wonders propped under a basewood tree near mother hoeing in the garden. Big sister drying berries in the sun. Little boys prance by on their deer sticks, kicking up their legs to make baby laugh.
see them here? It says, where shining water meets the shore, mother gathers, cattail reeds, grandmother weaves the mats, her long deer bone needle gliding in and out. What did you see today that was beautiful? She asked big sister, weaving her web. What did you hear that was pleasing? Baby listens, swinging from a low birch limb. In the blue sky water, children swim, sleek as loons, dive for clamshells, laugh and splash, race to meet father skimming to the shore. Fish flopping in his birch bark canoe. Baby watches swaying to the swish, swish, swish of the waves. See the canoe? And baby's listening to the swish, swish, swish of the water. Big sister watches grandmother stuff a squirrel skin with wild rice, stitch up the toy for baby, sees how she knots it, then sister ties a knot in baby's dream net webbing. When the son goes home to sleep, Slipping under a red cloud blanket, mother wraps baby in a rabbit skin, fluffs dried moss inside the, ting inside the tinking ham, and tucks baby snug for the night. Good dreams, wishes big sister, and hangs the net on the cradleboard hoop, a charm to catch bad dreams. Way, way, baby croons mother, rocking baby in a hammock. Way, baby, baby, way. Baby, sleep, baby, sleep. Your dream net will protect you. Sleep, baby, sleep. Sleep, baby, sleep and dream. And here's baby with the dream net. Out of the night swam dark wings of bad dreams, but the dream net, gu but the dream net guards the way. Tangled in the net, dark dreams are caught like flies in a spider web. So say baby's sleeping, the bad dreams get caught in the net and it cannot scare baby. Oh, look at this. Oh, dreams of the owl, cuckoo, swooping, swooping down from the dark sky. Dreams of beating wings and sharp claws, but caught in the web of the dream net while baby sleeps smiling. See? The owl cannot scare baby because of the dream net. It says, all night, the bad dreams struggle to fight free, but the dream net holds them fast, helpless. The bad dreams die at dawn, stuck by the morning light. In the land of the Obidwe, a long time ago, a baby sleeps dreaming. So that tells you a little bit about what a dream catcher does. See, when you make a dream catcher, so the legend goes, if you hang it above your bed, it will catch all the bad dreams so that they can't get you and only good dreams will go through. So this is Miss Barbara's dream catcher that I made. So you're going to get, when you pick up the kit, what you're gonna get, you're gonna get a bag with a list like this on it that shows you everything in the bag. You're going to have feathers, beads, you're going to have a paper plate, and you're going to have yarn. And it's gonna tell you exactly how to put it together. It's not gonna look exactly like mine because everyone's is gonna be a little different, which is part of the fun. You can color it with crayons, you can wrap the yarn around the plate, however you wanna do it. The only thing you're gonna need at home is you're gonna need a pair of scissors, and you're going to need a hole puncher to punch the holes around the paper plate. So that is our story time for Catch Your Dreams. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoy making a dream catcher. Again, come on into the library and you can get the kit to make the dream catcher. And we'll see you soon. Thanks for joining me today. Bye-bye.